Hello and welcome back to the Herb Entrepreneur Conference. I'm Yolanda Joy and in this session we are going to be talking about how you can create a consistent look in your brand photos which is so important for yourself as an herbalist and also the work that you do for your herbal brand. For this session I am so thrilled to introduce Hannah Lasorsa, who is the founder of the Herbal Content Cottage and marketing specialist at the Herbal Academy. Hannah, I'm so glad that you can be here today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here and I'm excited to talk. Yeah, it truly is a pleasure. I know that you were one of the speakers at last year's conference and it truly was a crowd favorite in you have such a great way of presenting the visuals. And I think anyone who follows the Herbal Academy and the Herbal Content Cottage has a pretty good idea of that as well, because there is this uh, kind of magical thread in the way that the photos come across and just how they make you feel as well, which is like another whole like level of um, brand photos. So I know that you have a few slides prepared to walk us through this topic and really get into the core of creating brand photos that are consistent. And so I think we can just take it away. If you'd like to share your screen, we can get started. Great, let's do it. Yes, I'm excited for you all to see these slides. And I will say, um, if you're watching and you're kind of like multitasking or doing laundry, you may want to occasionally pop over and take a look because it is a very, with photography, it is a very visual conversation. And so being able to see a lot of these examples as we talk through things is going to be really, really helpful. Okay, so today I'm so excited to talk with you all about creating a consistent look in your brand photos. Um, a lot of people, when they start taking their photos for their herbal brand, they realize that once they put all their images side by side, maybe on their website or on their Instagram, they don't always look good next to each other. And this can be really frustrating because you're putting your heart and energy into creating some images that, you know, are going to work for your brand and you want them to all look consistent and really represent who you are and what your brand is about. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And here's kind of an example of on the left, we have inconsistent images. And on the right, we have an example of how this is gonna look and feel once you're capturing consistent images. So um, we're gonna be examining why are your photos inconsistent? What are some kind of the key elements to look at? And then I'm gonna share some tips on how you can start creating consistent images at home or if you work with a photographer, what are some things that you can communicate to them to really help make sure that you walk away from your shoot with a whole wide variety of images that all work well together? So before we dive in, my name's Hannah. I am the marketing specialist at the Herbal Academy, and I'm also the founder of Herbal Content Cottage. We are a marketing studio that works entirely with herbalism brands and everyone on my team from the writers to photographers have an herbalism background. We are really passionate about connecting people to plants. Um, I personally believe that so much of the strife in this world, whether it's mentally, mental, physical, spiritual, stems from a disconnect with nature and with plants. And we need more medicine makers and green thumbs out there. So we are so honored to get to work with herbalists and product makers and educators to spread the message of the plants and to help them tell their story so that they can further connect with their audience and continue the good work. We are very passionate also about sustainability. We are business members at the United Plant Savers, and we only work with brands who really focus on sustainability when it comes to their sourcing and their packaging and all of their brand mission. So that's just a little bit of who we are. We offer, we're a full-on marketing studio, so we offer copywriting and photography, and all of our photography really has that herbal focus. So that's kind of the background of what we're going to be covering today as we talk about images. So, um, so at first you may be thinking, okay, you know, oh, they're just photos. Do they really matter? I have so many other things in my brand that I have to focus on right now. 
And I do want to clarify from a marketing perspective, yes, your photos are really important. Um, a couple of statistics that kind of help bring this home is that 67% of consumers say the quality of an image is very important in selecting and purchasing a product. And 94% of consumers will just straight up leave a website if it's not designed well and your photography is a strong element of that. I know for me personally, um, if I'm on Instagram or I'm surfing the web and I come upon a website or a social channel that isn't visually appealing, to me, I see that as a little bit unprofessional. And I wonder if that level of unprofessionalness will translate to other elements of the brand. Is my shipping going to be delayed? Are they being intentional about their sourcing? These are your photos are your first impression. One way you can think about it is if you were to show up to a job interview in sweatpants, the person who's doing the interview may jump to some conclusions about who you are and how you, the work that you're going to do. Whereas if you show up looking very polished and professional and ready for the job, chances are that's going to make a better impression. And when it comes to marketing, your photos are your outfit. It's what people see right away. It's how you represent your brand to everyone who's out there. And it is competitive, you know, social media. We've got a ton of people out there who have beautiful images and it, there's, you know, you, you want to stand apart from the crowd. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to do that um, you know, on a consistent level. So who is this workshop for? Um, it, it's going to be applicable to clinical herbalists and herbal service providers herbal product makers, educators, authors, bloggers. Basically, if you have an herbal business, which I'm going to assume you do because it's the Herbal Entrepreneur Conference, then you're going to need some good photos to represent your brand. Um, and I'm going to be sharing tips for anyone who plans on taking their own photos. How can you really create the look you're going for? But also anyone who plans on working with a professional photographer um, oftentimes, if you hire a local photographer, they are going to show up and they're going to get a lot of photos of you smiling in different settings. They're going to have more of a portrait type focus, um, but they're not necessarily going to know how to bring that herbal element front and center. And you're going to need to provide some direction in order to, to do that and to make sure that the images you receive are aligned with your brand vibe. Kind of. So we're going to talk more about that, but it's going to be applicable to anyone, really, no matter how big your brand is, if you need your own photos. And before we dive in, I do also just want to share a reminder to be patient with yourself. This is a new skill that you will be learning. Um, photography, just like you didn't become a clinical herbalist overnight, you didn't launch your brand overnight, you're not going to start taking professional photos overnight. Um, however, with a lot of the techniques that we're going to cover today, you can see a big improvement really, really quickly. And um, but I just want to, you know, this is just a reminder, be patient with yourself, be kind. Um, on the, the photo on the left here is the first photo that I ever intentionally staged. Um, I was enrolled in Rosemary Gladstar's herbal correspondence course, and I was just learning how to make fire cider. And I found these distressed wood pallets by the side of the road. And I was so excited to come home and take a photo and really get into it. And this is what I got. And it's okay, but it's not the best photo ever. And I was a little disappointed that I spent, you know, like an hour trying to figure this out. And this is what I got. And then here on the right, this is actually just a screen grab from a video that I recorded for the Herbal Academy recently. It's also fire cider and it's much more visually engaging. There's much more going on. It's just a prettier shot. Um, but it took me, you know, time to learn these skills. And so just know that you can absolutely do it. You can have a lot of fun with it. Photography is a creative adventure. Um, so it really is an avenue where you can. Um, bring your creativity to life and have a lot of fun with it. So, okay, let's go ahead and dive in. So as we're looking at these, this is an example of an inconsistent photo. So you could pretend like this is an Instagram board and you can just kind of tell by looking at it, the images, each one on its own is okay, but they don't really look fantastic side by side. 
Um, so this is an issue again for social and for your website. You just want your photos to work together. And so we, the, we're going to kind of identify why is that? Like what's going on here that's not working? And oftentimes it's going to come down to one or a few of these main points. It could be that you haven't really honed in on your style yet. Um, maybe one image is very uh, like rustic here. For example, I have distressed wooded boards and then but down here in the bottom middle is like a very clean and modern those vibes are really different and so we're going to be talking about how you can identify your style and be a little bit more intentional about what you're trying to get also your lighting makes a very big difference most brands either lean into kind of having a bright and airy aesthetic or a little bit kind of like a darker, moody, maybe like witchier vibe. Um, and you're going to want to identify which one do you want for your brand and then consistently work on achieving that. Also, the tone. Some of these images have like here in the middle has a very warm tone. Um, it has yellows and oranges, both in the props and in the editing. And others are very cool. Down here in the bottom left, this is a very cool image. You can see that the greens have almost a little bit of a bluish undertone. And when you put warm and cool images next to each other, they don't really work. And so you're going to want to identify to which one of these you lean into. And then finally, of course, your branding is going to factor in. What are your brand colors um, and how does that all work in and factor in? And that's how you're going to consistently create something that is on brand for your style. So, okay. So now let's kind of start talking about how do we how do we fix this? We have inconsistent images. How do we fix it? The first thing you want to do is get really, really clear on your vision. What are you trying to create? What's your vibe? Um, and oftentimes when people are just starting out with photography, especially if they're doing their own, they are their images are all over the place because they haven't really defined their style yet. Um, so a really good way to figure out your style, if you haven't done this yet, is to create a Pinterest board. Um, I'm, most people are probably familiar with Pinterest, but if you're not, it's a social media platform. It's free to create an account. And basically, you create boards that are just a collection of, of images that you like. And you can it's you kind of use it like a search engine. You type in at the top, you know, banana bread recipe or farmhouse kitchen aesthetic, and you start seeing all these images and it's very visual um, focused. So I want you to do that. I want you to create a Pinterest account, log in and start scrolling through and finding images that really resonate, resonate with you and pin them to a board. And you can type, it can be any type of images. Okay. You don't have to do herbal photos at this point. It can be recipes. It can be outfits. It can be interior design. Um, it can also be, you know, herbal photos, product photos. At this point, you're just pinning things that really feel good to you and make you think, oh, yeah, 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 that's what I'm going for. That is the feeling that I want my images to evoke. And, um, and then once you have your Pinterest board created, you're going to analyze it. And you're, what we're doing while we analyze your Pinterest board is you're kind of looking for recurring themes. Chances are your images are going to kind of all have some things generally in common. So we always, anytime I work with a new client, I say, please send me a mood board or a Pinterest board so that I can interpret that into their shoot. And um, some of the things I look for when I'm analyzing that board is the light. So in this example, let's pretend that these three images are from a Pinterest board that a client submitted or that you made for yourself. I can look at this and I can see these images are all really bright. There's sunshine. There's a lot of white in here. There's white backgrounds, white clothing, white surfaces, white linens. All of that contributes to a bright and airy vibe. Also, what is the style? Um, I see um, it kind of feels like a modern home, but with rustic elements. 
when I look at the surfaces, I can see there's a farmhouse table and there's a lot of wood and white, and it just feels like kind of a natural, maybe farmhousey kind of cottagey vibe. So I would, when I, if I were to recreate this shoot, I would look for wooden surfaces, white grounds, and natural elements. Or maybe this isn't your vibe. Maybe you are kind of into like moody and um, types, darker shots. So if someone sent me a board and these images were on it, I would think, okay, as far as the light goes, we're going to lean into darker. Um, as for the backgrounds, I'm seeing some, you know, more dark things. So for example, this image in the far right, this background is dark, dark gray. And in the other slides, all the backgrounds were very white. Here in the middle, there's a black background here, a bit behind the kettle. And there's just more dark props being used. The, this candle is black. This other candle holder is black. Um, you know, there's a dark copper. There's a rich, saturated um, purple linen. The elements that are pulled in are darker. And it's also just edited to be darker and moodier in general. And editing is something we're going to talk about later in this presentation. And it's very, very important for getting a consistent look. So that is step one. If you haven't already done this and kind of identified your brand vibe, I really encourage you to work on that before you take any more photos or before you hire a photographer. You want to get very clear on what's your vision. And also, what's your style? You know, is it farmhouse chic? Is it maximalist? I, I personally love maximalist photos, that apothecary type scene where there's herbs everywhere and there's honey spilling out of the spoon and there's oil dripping down the bottle. To me, that's really vibrant and alive. And I feel like I just walked into a, a, a like a Mad Hatter kitchen day and it's so fun. But other people are really drawn to a very clean and minimalist look. Um, where there's very few props in the surf uh, on the scene. And maybe there's a, you know, just a, a vase in the background with a single flower in it. So pay attention to that because again, that's going to lean toward your consistency. You either want to be consistently clean and modern or consistently farmhouse chic or consistently maximalist, colorful, whatever your vibe is, stick with it. And, and be consistent. And we're going to talk about how to do that. But here at step one is identify it. So now we're going to start talking about how to actually create it. Okay. So you've defined your vision, but how do you bring it to life? And I know a lot of people, I know I did this when I first started out. I really love the bright farmhouse look, but my house at the time, my kitchen was dark. I didn't have a lot of light and I wasn't, I felt very intimidated by this idea of needing my whole, everywhere I shoot in my house to match the aesthetic that I was going for. And we don't all live in these perfect Instagram worthy houses. And so what if your house is really dark and you want light photos? What if your house is a mess? What if you have laundry in the on the couch or kids playing in the background, how can you create a spot um, where you take your photos? And so I just want to say this is very doable. You do not have to go renovate your house or paint your kitchen. All you need to do is identify one spot in your home that's going to be where you take your photos. And so I want to talk at this point about light. Light is very, very important with your photography. And especially if you're starting out, and you're not going to go invest in expensive lighting equipment, um, then you really want to focus on natural light. It doesn't matter if you want bright photos or dark and moody photos. Everyone needs to be capturing images in good light. And then you can bring that vibe through in the props that you use and in the way that you edit your images. So how do you find good light? You have to walk around your house and look at the windows. I always prefer a north facing window. If you have a nice north facing window, I really like that because it gives you consistent light throughout the day. And it's kind of a nice diffused light. It's not overly harsh like a south facing window would be. When you have harsh light like that, you get a bunch of shadows and it can be a little bit more difficult to work with. 
East and West facing windows are nice too. You're just gonna be a little bit more limited on the times of day that you can shoot. Um, just go walk around your house at different times of the day and figure out if you have a north facing window, is there an area around it that you could do your photos in? Um, it does not have to be a permanent photo location. Let's say you're a product maker and you just want a spot where you can capture some photos for your store. In that case, you can absolutely just use like a pop-up card table and start creating a scene in front of that window when you are ready to do your photos. Or if you wanna take photos all the time, then you may wanna invest in like a nice desk or some sort of surface that kind of matches your vibe and just leave it there next to that window and that is your photo corner of your house. If you have a clinic, then it's most likely gonna be, again, look around that window. That's where you're gonna wanna take your photos. Um, do not, um, do not lean into overhead lights or artificial lights. I know a lot of beginning photographers, it's an easy mistake to make. You might think, okay, I'm going to take some photos. Let's brighten it up in here. Let's turn on the lights. No, this is a big mistake. A lot of people do it at first, but your artificial lights and lamps give a weird kind of orangey glow to your photos. Or if you're using LED lights, could give it a weird blue undertone that is really hard to get to get out of your photos. You really have to edit it quite a bit to make it look natural. So after you identify your spot, turn off your lights. You're not shooting with any lights on. You're really focusing on natural light from your window. Um, another mistake that a lot of beginning photographers make is when it comes to shooting outside. It's, uh, I know I did this when I was first getting started, you think, Hey, I am I'm gonna, it's a nice sunny, it's a beautiful day out. Let's go outside and take photos. But you actually are gonna get much better results if you shoot on a day that's a little bit overcast, or if you shoot in the, the like dawn or dusk. It's a time called golden hour in photography. And that's when you get this really lovely, soft, diffused light that translates to your images so much better. Even if you need to shoot outside on a sunny day, can you shoot on a porch or under a tree or somewhere where you're going to have um, more diffused, gentler light? If you're squinting in your photos um, or if you see harsh shadows around your products or your props, then it's probably not the best lighting situation. So um, that is step one. Okay, if you're wanting to get a, a high quality, consistent look, you've got to figure out where am I going to be working? Where am I going to take photos? And it all starts with your window. So go walk around your house. Where's a nice, pretty window that's got some light? And so, oh, another thing with light before I move on, uh, it's really nice to have your source of light coming up to your table from the side. So when you position, you can see here, the window is on the side of my table and it's lighting up the images kind of from, from the side like that. So as you figure out where am I going to pop up my table or where am I going to keep my surface? Um, that's a really helpful thing. You don't necessarily want the light to be behind your product. Um, backlit can look really cool um, if you know what you're doing, but it can also really blow out your images. And it's as if you're beginning, it's just a little, little risky for a beginner shot. Okay, so now you've set up your table next to a nice light source and it's time to choose your surfaces. Um, so again, you're gonna be picking out something that leans into your vibe. So this little farmhouse desk right here is, <laughs> I have probably used this desk in 90% of the photo shoots I've done over the past five years. I love it. I love the wood, it photographs well, and that was such a, a worthy investment on my end. Um, Actually, I should say on my husband's and my husband made this desk for me from um, Barnwood on a, on our old property. And I, I love it. And it fits the aesthetic that I'm going for. But if you don't have, let's say you really like the farmhouse look, but you don't have a, t a desk like this, or you don't want to go invest in a, in a whole farmhouse table, there are surfaces that you can buy. Um, that are photography surfaces. And some of them are really good. A lot of photographers use them and you cannot tell that it's not actually a desk. 
or it's not actually wood or tile. Um, and at the end of this presentation, I'm going to share some of my favorite backdrop stores with you so you can see where do I shop, where do I buy these things. Um, but so, yeah, so you don't have to go buy a table. You can buy a surface. And I would recommend starting with one or two vinyl surfaces um, that you can also use as backdrops. You see this um, in this example here. It looks like there's a tile backdrop hanging here to the side. And um, I would start with investing in just one or two based on your vibe. Um, I would really start with either something in solid white or solid black because you're going to get the most use out of them and they're not going to get boring. Um, or then if you need it, some sort of solid wood or maybe a tile, something that you um, can really use often and in a lot of your photos and you're not going to get sick of it. And um, the reason this is so important is because we're creating the foundation of a scene that you can recreate over and over and over and over again anytime you need photos and to get this consistent vibe. Okay, so one of the reasons your photos may be inconsistent now is because you just pull out your phone anytime you're thinking, oh, this could take it, this would be a good photo. I'm just going to snap a photo of this right now. And then you go about your day. And I I applaud you for, for thinking to get the photos. I know getting even just in that mindset sometimes can be a learning curve. But what I'm going to encourage you to do moving forward is if you whip out, you go to whip out that phone, you go to take your photo, instead pause and say, wait a minute, I'm just going to take five minutes. I'm going to carry this upstairs to my little photo space where I have my surface. I can set up my backdrop. It won't take more than five minutes. I know the light is good. And I'm just going to make sure that anytime I capture photos for my brand, I am in this little spot. And by investing in a backdrop like this, it doesn't matter what color your walls are. It doesn't matter if your room is messy. It doesn't matter if the kids are playing in the corner. None of that matters. It, it takes away all the pressure of needing to have this perfect photo worthy space. And instead, it's basically just like a pop up studio. And this is going to really, I promise, it's going to help you get so much more consistent and such more quality images. And with time, you can invest in different backdrops and different surfaces and different props to bring in um, more elements. But to start with, one or two in a solid color is going to make a huge difference. You hang your backdrops with something called, a, a, it's like a T-shaped backdrop stand. Um, I'll share a resource for one in, in, in the end. And if you're just getting started and you really don't have a budget for this, you can use sheets or linens. Use a tablecloth. Um, I just encourage you to please iron it before you hang it. There's, um, it's a kind of a, a beginner mistake I see a lot is the sheet will be hanging in the background and there will be hard creases on it that are distracting. Your eye kind of goes to that. So um, take a second to steam it if that's what you're going to do. Um, but you can absolutely start there. The reason I ultimately prefer vinyl is because you can wipe it clean. So if you spill some oil on it or, um, you know, I've had a lot of turmeric shoots here at the studio where turmeric really stains, but when it comes to vinyl, I just wipe it off. They last for years um, and they're really, really durable and you just roll them up and stick them in storage when you're not using them. So um, I highly recommend that you start there. Um, okay, but what if you have like a clinic or an office and so you're and you're not trying to shoot product photos or recipe photos, you're trying to shoot images that represent a service. This is a little bit trickier because in this case, your environment, your office is your scene more often than not. It's not about creating a table. It's about creating kind of a corner that works for you. So um, think about, again, when you're taking your photos, where's that window? Here in this example, you can see there's a window right here. That's why we're sitting next to it. That's why we're in this corner and not the other corner that is dark and dreary. So well, you know your photos are going to take place around this window. What can you do right in that corner to help align your images with your brand vibe. If you like, in this example, this is a bright and airy example. And some of the elements that help that bring this to life is that the walls are painted white. 
there's natural elements like plants and um, and rat rattan furniture and wood and a macrame thing, all things that are very earthy and um, kind of a little bit more of that like boho bright look. But if you really love a darker look, maybe you're very into um, kind of like a more moody vibe, then you could paint your office in this corner a dark, rich, saturated color. And you could have a velvet couch and you could light some candles in the corner and you could spread tarot cards on your desk. And um, there's things that you can do to make sure that every time you take photos in your office, you have that vibe that you're going for. And once you lay the foundation, there every time you need it. It's kind of like planting a garden if you're growing with perennials. The first year is the most work. You've got to get all everything in place, dig it all in, add your compost, get your foundation laid. But then every year after that, you have these beautiful blooms and these wonderful flowers to look forward to. And it's the same thing with setting up um, your photography space. A little bit of work up front, but then every time you need to take a photo, your space is ready for you and it's going to be consistent. Um, okay. Oh, here are some examples when we're talking about like clinical herbalists and service providers. There are some women who do a really great job of consistently posting images that are on brand um, that I think are really inspiring. And so you could consider following these women on Instagram. I'm not associated with these women. I have not taken their photos. I don't even know them. I just want to share them as a resource for you. Um, on the far left, we have Rachel Robinette. She's a clinical herbalist. And what I love about her photos is, especially this one, she, how she has the herb jars behind her. And this can be really great for a clinical herbalist, anyone who works with um, clients, especially maybe if you do Zoom calls, that could be the setup that you have behind your desk because you can see at a glance that we're looking at an herbalist. She is, she's got her herb jars. It's very clear. It helps tell the story of who she is and what she offers. And it's on brand for her. Her styling, she does, she does a great job. She's very fashion forward. She uses um, a little bit more of a minimalist style, very modern. And I can see all that in her images. In this middle example, we have Empress Karen M. Rose. And if you go to her Instagram, she's a really great inspiration for some of the darker images. She does like, uh, like kind of more moodier shots with velvet and um, dark colored walls will be behind her. Um, and she does a lot of like astrology, like verbal astrology. And that moodier, darker vibe kind of plays into that um, intersection. And so um, she just does a really beautiful job. And then on the far right, we have Erin Lovell Verinder. I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right. I think she's in New Zealand. And I just love this photo for a clinical herbalist because it's a little bit more on the folksy side. Um, she's here at her clinic. She has her handwritten labels on her jars. She's got a prairie dress on. Her dog is here with her. It it just really evokes so many feelings when you're looking at it. And you can tell, again, at a glance, exactly what she does and what she offers. And these images are all on brand. Um, they're consistent for these women. So you may want to consider following them. I just think these are all very inspiring accounts. So after you've identified your light, and you've made sure that your environment is leaning into the aesthetic that you want. Um, now it's time to kind of fill in the scene with props that are going to tell the story of whatever it, of whatever your messaging is. Maybe you're launching a new course or a book. Maybe you have a new spring product line. Maybe you're gearing up to do a marketing campaign to promote a new service that you offer. Whatever it is, you need to tell the story of what's going on. And when you choose your props, you're going to want to make sure that they're aligned with the, the vision and the aesthetic that you identify in your Pinterest board. So um, when I'm talking about props, props are all of the things in your photo. So here's this is a photo I took for Herbal Academy's advanced course. And we the props would be this, mess, this skeletal printout. Um, it would also be all of the herbs on the table, the bowls that I chose to use, the kettle, the amber dropper. I mean, literally anything that's on the table is a prop. And you do not need to run out and buy a bunch of props, but you do want to be very intentional with the props that you use and make sure you're playing into the vibe and the color themes that you identify. 
And when you're picking out your props, um, it's really helpful to keep in mind your brand colors. So if you have not identified your brand colors yet, I really encourage you to do that when it comes to the aesthetic side of your brand, graphics, your website, your photos, your colors are really going to help you be consistent. And that's why we identify a handful of brand colors is so we can consistently use them to represent your brand. And um, like all things, you can you can DIY this and do it for free, or you can invest thousands of dollars in working with an incredible graphic designer who's going to help you get into the psychology of your colors. What resonates best with your audience? What represents the, the vibe and the feel and the energy of your brand? Um, you can really dive deep into this. But if you're just starting out and you don't have a budget, that's okay. You don't have to go spend a lot of money on this. Again, I would head on over to Pinterest, our favorite little visual brainstorming platform, and type in brand color palette. And there are hundreds of examples. Uh, that's where both of these images are from, of color palettes that you can use for your branding. And I would see what, what resonates with you. And the reason I'm talking about this now is because as we think about props, so actually here I have a whole list of props that are great for apothecary type herbal shots. Um, when you're picking out your props, especially your linens, your napkins, your aprons, your tablecloths, you either want them to be in neutral colors like white or gray or black that you can use a lot, or you want them to be in your brand colors. And this is going to help, again, create that consistency. So um, just a little run through of some of these props that are um, helpful to have in hand. Um, are linens and aprons, herbs, of course, fresh or dried, you can hang them. Um, and then any like ingredients that you would find in your apothecary. So maybe you have herb infused oils or vinegar, beeswax, garlic, ginger, you know, anything that you use in your brand, what uh, in your products, or maybe it's a, 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 um, a ready-made product that you sell or one that you make. Um, you know, all of that, those like wonderful props. You could also bring in, you know, botanical illustrations. Um, you can hang them on the wall or lay them on your table. Um, but um, your favorite herbal books make great props. Of course, a mortar and pestle, the classic herbal prop. People, you take one look at that and you've got to feel that there's something either herbal or culinary going on. Teapots are big. I love working with teapots and mugs. Um, also, your amber-colored apothecary bottles. Harvest baskets are always a win. Beeswax candles are great. Crystals and gems, if you like, especially if you kind of like that, like, witchier, moodier vibe. Vases, flower vases can be very helpful for adding height to your scene so that it's not all just flat and one-dimensional. And your outfit, you know, if you're in the photo, what you choose to wear is a prop, technically. It, it, um, and so think about your brand colors when you're choosing your outfit. Is your outfit on brand? Um, and if it's not exactly your brand colors, then does it is it a neutral maybe that can work alongside your brand colors? Um, you just don't want to suddenly throw in a lot of bright colors um, if your branding isn't leaning into that. You're, that's going to create an, an inconsistent look for you. And so finally, perhaps the most important step in this entire conversation is editing. Um, editing is when you can take all these different photos from all these different places if you need to and help them really feel consistent. So editing is, I know that if you're taking your own photos or just starting out, it can feel a little intimidating. But when I started learning how to edit my photos, um, I mean, you can take just, I'm actually going to walk you through some of the steps right now. This is when you're going to see your photos just transform. If you walk away from this workshop with one element that you really use, I hope it's, I hope it's these editing tips. Um, it's going to make such a difference. So first off, when we first start taking photos, I know it can be very tempting if you snap a photo on your phone to slap an Instagram filter on there and post it. But these filters are not the best way to go about it. Oftentimes they're a little bit 
kind of like too extreme, you know, like um, they're, they're trendy and uh, more on the extreme side. And what you want to be doing is creating a classic look so that your photos are still going to be relevant three, four, five, ten years down the road. Um, and so the best way to achieve this is using a software system. It's an Adobe product called Lightroom. You can get, it's a subscription-based product. It's $9 a month. I'm not associated with them. I'm not an affiliate. I just know from my work and from working with other photographers that this is really, um, this is the platform I most highly recommend using. And they have something called presets that are really similar to filters in the sense that you just, with a single click of a button, you can apply a different look to your photos, but they're much higher quality. They're more professional and it's gonna leave you with something that has more of a timeless, uh, high, higher quality look compared to like a trendy filter. And so let's look at some examples that when it comes down to editing. So um, on the left, we have a photo that is just straight off of my camera. And I, you know, I looked at that and I was like, okay, you know, I like the composition. I like the violet flowers, but it doesn't really pop. And it was only after I edited it that I was able to get an image that I was really excited about and that really popped. And um, so you can do this too. And with presets, it is just literally one button. You click one button inside Lightroom and it gives you this look. Okay, it does not have to be intimidating. And you can start there and then always expand your skill set in years to come. Um, here's another example. So here in the middle is an unedited photo just straight off my camera. And then on the left, we have a, a bright and vibrant edit. And on the right, we have more of that dark and moody vibe. And so this is the only thing that changed was the editing. I didn't change the background. I didn't change the surface, the props. It's just the edit can give you this much of a difference. Um, and so this is what I mean when I say, if you take away one skill, let it be this. And I actually would like to just take a moment to show you what Lightroom looks like because I know that so many people are intimidated um, by this. And so I'm going to show you how easy this is. So this is Lightroom, um, and I have this image pulled up. On the far right, we have all the different sliding features to um, edit the image. We can increase the brightness, we can increase the shadows, and eventually, someday, I encourage you to check this out. But for now, in this tab right here, I have presets. And I'm just gonna move through these presets and show you how much this image changes with just a single click. When you are, so in order to find these presets, you can just Google Lightroom presets and lots of photographers have created presets that match kind of their aesthetic. So if there's a photographer who you really like, go to their website and see if they sell presets. These examples here are all from a photographer named Renee Bird. She has a website called Will Frolic for Food, and she sells her presets there. Again, I'm not associated with her. I just really like her look, and I um, will sometimes start with these as my base, then build upon them and refine them to have more of my own vibe over here in this far right-hand corner. So to get a consistent look, what I encourage you to do is to identify, you know, one to five presets that you like that. So if you're either give you that bright and airy look or the dark and moody look, they're either warm or cool. And you're gonna consistently apply that preset to every photo that you have. And it's going to give them a cohesion that you're gonna be missing otherwise. Even if you take that same, even if you always shoot your photo in the same spot, in the same room, you know, light changes from day to day. Um, and this is how you're going to give your images. Not only are they going to look so much better, but they're really going to be consistent. So identify a handful for your brand that work well together. And the reason you might want a few is because, again, sometimes your light changes or maybe one preset looks really good on plants and another preset looks really good in, um, you know, I don't know, 
your your skin tone or your the way you look personally. You like the way you look with that preset. So it's helpful to have a few that you can kind of use in different situations. And that's as easy as it is. You literally just, you buy their preset. You It always comes with instructions on how to add them to Lightroom. You import it and then you just pick the ones that you like and you stick with those presets. Um, I highly recommend this, you guys. It's really not, not difficult. And with time, as you're becoming familiar with Lightroom, then you can increase your skills and you can start using these tabs over in the right, um, right hand column. You can even do some really amazing things like um, here I'm going to apply this moody uh, preset and then I'm going to do a masking. I'm going to just add a brush right here on this pot. And I'm going to take my exposure here and I'm going to brighten this up just in the pot. And now look how cool that is. We get like a glow of these leaves while the rest is moody. And did you see how long that took me? It took me maybe 10 seconds. So it does not, it's not hard. You can watch YouTube videos. There's classes on this, but to watch, to really improve your photography skills, make it pop well and make them consistent. It's your editing. This is highly, highly recommended. So, okay. So now let's just look, let's kind of wrap it up by looking at some examples of how we can bring it all together, all the different elements we talked about. So I mentioned your brand colors are important when it comes to picking out your props. Here's an example from a client of ours, Jessica's Apothecary, um, who is her brand colors are on the left. And then the final shot is on the right. And you can see that we brought in um, the peach from her brand colors is represented in her, her product. Um, we have brought in this peachy kind of pink color in her linen. We brought in her dark green color here over here in this plant. And, you know, the wonderful thing about aligning your props with your brand colors is that it actually makes things a lot easier. Now you don't have to go sort through every color in the world and every prop at your local thrift store. You're only looking for things that are within your brand colors. It's it just it really helps cut back on how much you need to look for and what you need to use. And it gives you a template. Okay. These are, this is what I'm going for. I only need to worry about stuff in this vibe. And of course, this isn't to say don't use something if it's not in your brand colors. You can absolutely bring it in. Just use this as your foundation. This is your, your guidepost. And if you want to kind of, you know, move outside the boundaries now and then, go for it. Have fun. This just helps you stay more consistent. Here's another example, a client of ours, Make and Mary. There's awesome. Um female-owned company out of Portland that does a lot of herbal products and events. And they sent us this mood board on the left. And on the right is the final shot that we got out of it. And as we were interpreting it, we can see, okay, you know, a lot of these images have solid colored backgrounds. Um, so we brought in a solid terracotta background and a solid colored surface. I see a lot of blacks and grays in all of these colors, which in this case, their product itself kind of brought in that element. And then the other colors we're seeing are kind of like neutrals, um, uh, whites and grays and creams, which we brought to life through the, um, the linen, um, that apron that I'm wearing in my shirt. They're not afraid of little pops of colors. You got the mustard here. We have an orange sofa a little bit off screen here. And so we brought that in with the um, the herbs that are used in the recipe. There's chamomile and rose down here and a little bit of pine in the edge of the photo. So that is how you can kind of use your mood board and your brand colors to, to, get a, a, to get the look you're going for and to be consistent about it. Here's a final example from an herbal soap company, Meadowroot. The brand colors are on the left and you can see how those the final shot brings it together. The actual product has a lot of the brand colors in it. Um, so we just brought in a neutral elements on the right to kind of, linens are my favorite prop. Honestly, it, it adds texture and um, softness to an image where you need it. And then we brought in this plant to have for some more of this green and kind of terracotta vibes and to give it a natural element. So um, when you're kind of, bringing everything together like okay i'm just starting off i don't want to invest in a lot of stuff but how can i create my little 
pop-up corner um, or office space on a budget? Where do you start? Here's what I would start with. I would invest in one or two vinyl backdrops that you can use either as a backdrop or a surface. This is most relevant for anyone who's going to be creating a pop-up space at their home or office. Um, and you, one or two vinyl backdrops. And then this is the T-shaped stand that you hang your backdrop on. So you just hang it across this bar and then clip it on. And um, so that's what I'm using here. I would invest in a linen tea towel, either in a neutral, either white if you like the bright images or black or brown or dark, dark purple if you like the moody and use that all the time. I don't, I honestly would be very curious to see if I've taken a single photo in the past five years that doesn't have a linen in it somewhere. <laughs> they provide so much texture and they're really an important prop. Um, and then I would get your Lightroom subscription. Remember what I said, if you walk away from this with anything, it's your editing. Um, that's $9.99 a month. And wow, is it worth it? And then you may want to consider getting a tripod. Tripods are really, really helpful um, because you can kind of set up your scene and then you can fill in the gaps um, based on what you're seeing within your frame. You can also set the timer if you want to bring yourself into the photo, either as a portrait or if you want to have your hands in there, maybe pouring some tea or dropping some tincture drops back into your bottle. You know, anytime you want your hands in the photo, you need to free up your hands. You can't be holding your camera. And so you're going to need to get a little tripod, whether that's for your phone or for your camera. So that's what I would start if I was starting from scratch and I could only had a budget of, say, maybe, I don't know what that is if I added up, maybe $80. Um, that's, that's where I'd be. That's what I would start with. And um, as far as where to buy these things, you can, um, so for your props, I get a lot of my props from antique stores, um, thrift stores, Facebook marketplace, on the side of the road. I mean, I like, and I like that look. I like that kind of vintage thrifted vibe. Um, but you can also search online for, you know, whatever your aesthetic is. Um, remember that anything that you buy, any props that you buy, your backdrops, these are business expenses. So keep the receipt and write it off. You can also just find stuff around your house. You know, chances are the aesthetic you want for your brand is somewhat aligned with your style already. And so you can just look around your house. You know, do you already have some of these things that you need? When it comes to your linens, uh, like your linen tea towels and also your aprons, um, there are two Etsy stores that I buy all my stuff from. One of them is called Not Perfect Linen and one is called Wonder Linen. And they both have beautiful linens and you can get in a huge variety of colors. When it comes to backdrops, my favorite backdrop company is Error Backdrops. These are so beautiful. This has, this couple, they have like the dream life. They basically travel around the world finding beautiful surfaces. So it could be a wall in France or a old distressed tile in a chapel. And they take the photos of it and transform them into these beautiful, rich, vibrant surfaces, um, vinyl surfaces and backdrops that you can buy. Um, and then a slightly more budget-friendly option for backdrops is drop a wall. I've gotten a lot from them over the years as well. Um, I would, the thing with backdrops to keep in mind is the quality does vary. Um, some of them, if you're just buying a really, if you're just trying to buy the most inexpensive one you can find, it is an area where it's a little bit, you get what you pay for. Um, they often look a little bit fake. You can tell it's a backdrop. They look kind of grainy. Um, so this is one of those areas where I, um, yeah, you get what you pay for and it's worth paying a little bit more to get something that, that you're really excited about. Um, and then if, if you're taking your own photos and you really want to learn more about styling, how to arrange your props in a way that looks great, um, how to set up additional lighting, how, you know, all the kind of like more advanced photography skills that we just don't have time to get into today, then there are two courses that you could check out. Order Moon Studio is run by Melissa. She's actually um, was is a member of the Herbal Academy team, and she teaches beginning business owners how to take their own brand photos, especially if you're going to be in them. So if you need to set the timer, it's kind of like a portrait. How do you adjust your lighting? How do you use your iPhone settings? 
she covers all of that and it's a really good intro introductory course. If you want to go a lot more in depth, um, and especially if you're interested in like recipe photography for your herbal recipes or even product photos, um, more lifestyle type stuff, gardening photos, maybe working your farm. I highly, highly recommend this course. Um, the photographer, her name's Eva Cosmos. Cosmos? I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Flores. And she has a variety of online photography courses and also videography courses. Um, and she... I've taken a couple of them and I absolutely love it. She has a gorgeous style. Her personal style is a little bit more of that moody aesthetic, um, but you can apply it to any, any aesthetic. And she also has in-depth units about editing. Um, or you can decide, you know what, I'm just going to hire a photographer. I don't have time to learn all this and don't really want to. And that's totally cool. You can absolutely do that. Um, keep in mind, if you're going to hire a photographer that everything you learned in this course is still applicable because when they, um, if you're, if you're a service provider and you're going to have them come to your home or come to your clinic, it's going to be up to you to say, okay, I want to go stand by this window and I'm going to wear this shirt because this is on brand for me. And now I'm going to change my outfit so I can get more use from these photos. And we're going to come over to my garden and I'm going to harvest violet. And now we're going to change again and we're going to go to my dining room where I'm going to strain some calendula flowers from the oil. You are the director. And in order for you to get a whole lot of useful images from your suit, you have to have a clean place. It needs to be ready to go. You have to get an outfit picked out and your props lined up. And um, all of this skill very much applies. And then you can just say, okay, photographer, let's start over here. Or maybe you want to outsource your product photos or recipe photos or lifestyle photos to a studio like we do. Um, and in that case, what folks do is they package everything up and they send it to us. And then I also say, okay, cool. Give me that mood board because we talked about how important that is and share your brand colors with me. And then we create that vibe for them. But you still have to know what your vision is because again, you're the director. You are in charge of your brand. It's your vision that photographers or your teammates are helping bring to life. So that is it. I hope that was helpful. I know we kind of covered a lot today, but I just wanted to give you guys as much information as possible and you can do with it what you want and you can find your vision and create it and bring it to life. So I would love to stay in touch with you all. I love cheering on herbal entrepreneurs, seeing what you're up to and um, answering any questions that you have. Feel free to DM me, send me a message on our website. I really enjoy um, talking about this. I think um, marketing is fun. I'm like a marketing nerd and the photography side of it is it's, it's really fun. You can see a lot of improvement and it's really inspiring. Um, so you can find us on Instagram at Herbal Content Cottage with a period between each word, or you can find us online at herbalcontentcottage.com. And that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. That was such a great overview of really just how to like set up the set and all the way through the, the like the lighting and the props and all the way through the editing process. I especially loved that you included having that like set place in your house set up to create like the, the brand photos because I can see myself really using that in that sometimes you think about taking photos and you just, you know, just take a photo where it is and it would make such a difference just to like go upstairs and use that window and it would just look the same with those like that linen tea towel and the backdrop and it just makes that huge difference using the same thing but having the like the, the place where you take photos yes. which is a, a great tip yeah good thank you it really it I felt for me personally that my photography just transformed when I started using that tip because you know if you just whip out your phone and are taking photos wherever you're at Again, I do, I applaud that because you have to get in that mindset, but if you can then take it one step further and just say, wait a minute, I'm just going to walk over to my little corner and I'm going to do it here. Um, that's when you just, that consistency starts really coming through for people.
Yeah, and that's where it does also come in the idea of always getting better and like where you start from and where you get up to because it is that first phase is actually remembering to take photos while you're producing and while you're manufacturing, while you're in the garden, like while you're doing things in your business, showing behind the scenes of what you do as an herbalist. People love that from a marketing perspective. But like that's the first step, but then really creating a consistent brand and like that people can recognize that photo is from your Ebel brand. It's like a whole nother level that you kind of reach um, as you keep on going, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, that reminds me is when we're talking about whipping out that phone, you know, one question I get from people a lot is like, well, what about it at like a workshop or a um, like in a, a teaching space, you know, where it's maybe like you don't, you're not, you don't have any control over the setup or um, like the decorating, you know, like maybe it's just like a community building. And in that case, a couple tips I have would be, um, you know, you're still going to bring stuff. You're still going to have your baskets. You're still going to have some small things to that you can use as your props. And then that is an example where your editing really comes in because then you, you edit your images to look consistent. So I just want to, I just want to throw that out there. I know I'll get a lot of questions about like in-person events. Um, your outfit, you know, you can wear a linen apron that feels on brand. You can still apply so many of these things to, to live events too. Yeah, that's a really good point. And like, it does show as well the difference that editing has on the photos, like seeing that visual representation of like the one photo being transformed to that darker moody um, elements and then the lighter version. It's just, it really does make it obvious that like, just the editing can change one single photo so much. So to wrap up today's session, I would love it if you could give us a quick summary with your top three takeaways for people who are really wanting to create this consistent brand look for their, for their herbal business. So yeah, what are your top three tips for us today? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, number one tip is the editing. Um, so I would recommend installing Lightroom. On, you can get it on your desktop or for mobile if you do it all on your phone. And then search around for some presets. You can just Google Lightroom presets. Quite a few actually come already installed in Lightroom. So you could even start there and then identify some photographers whose aesthetic you really like and then download theirs if you, if you want. But And then hone in on the one to five presets that you use for everything. That is the number one takeaway. If you walk away with one thing on this, I really would just love to see more people do this. And please do not use Instagram filters for, for your, that's not the same. It's not the same. And it's just not, it's not going to give you the same look. Um, so that's my biggest one. Um, I would also really recommend that you at least hone, take the time to hone in on whether or not your vision is bright and airy or dark and moody. Because that's really the main, the two main directions that you can kind of go in. And even if you just get consistent on that one thing, that's going to really help tie your images together. And then from there, I would say, if you're taking your own photos, I would, for me, things got so much easier when I invested in a couple backdrops, because that is when it makes it so that you no longer have to worry about, is my living room clean? Is my kitchen on, on brand? You know, that just removes all that for you and lets you create that pop-up um, type situation. And and so those those would be my probably my three main things that, that learn how to use editing. You can do it in an afternoon. You don't have to be tech savvy. It's not too hard. Email me if you have questions. And then, uh, yeah, cre create it, figure out your pop-up scene and um, identify whether you want to be bright or moody. Yeah, I think they are great tips. And it really is a pretty easy starting point for anyone listening today. Like it really is a matter of deciding on where your place is to create the, the photos signing up for Lightroom, getting like a few props, like it's less than $100 to get everything on that page that you listed. And that is a huge investment that like, if you compare that to thousands of dollars on like graphic design package or photography, and yes. that kind of thing, it's just like insane. And what you can yeah. really do with such a small amount and look professional um, with, yeah, what you shared with us today. Yeah, yeah, you can save so much money. If you learn how to take your own brand photos, you can just save 
so much money over the long run. And I mean, clearly saying this is not in my best interest because I'm a photographer and I'm like, you know, but, but no, learn how to do it. You can, you can learn how to do it. It's not hard um, to do and it's fun and creative and you can always build upon the, the skills that I shared today. This is like tier one, like this is where you start. And then you can just get better and better and better as you get more and more excited. And as you kind of hone in on your style and what works for you and what makes you um, feel feel good. And you, you probably notice I use the word feeling a lot because when I'm looking at images, I really do think they evoke a feeling. And so I think paying attention to that, a lot of times herbalists are, you know, are kind of a little bit more intuitive and have that feeling side of it. And so listen to that, you know, listen to what what feels good in your, in your work and in your photos. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I think most people listening today do have that, um, tendency towards feeling and following the intuition. And it's part of what like draws us into herbalism in the beginning. And it's almost comforting to know that we can also tap into that in the business side of things as well, which often feels so like the opposite, but it's, um, yeah, we really can incorporate that part as well. I love that. Yeah, totally. And I, I do think, I think photography is, is a really good place for that because it's, it's more creative. You can have fun, you know, and just, yeah, listen, listen to yourself. See, see what you like. Yeah. I think we're all going to be enthused and ready to like go to get our corner set up now and start taking some product photos. I definitely am. So I hope other people are too. Before we wrap up, I would love it if you could share a little bit more about where people can uh, contact you once more. I know you have already shared it, but just let us know once more. Um, yeah. Where they can find out more. Definitely. Yeah. So um, my website is herbalcontentcottage.com. And again, we offer marketing services for herbalists. So that is everything from copy, maybe your website, copy, newsletters, blog posts, eBooks to photography, um, often a lot of product photography and recipes and general lifestyle apothecary type photos that you can use on your website and social to help tell the story of who you are and what you offer. Um, we offer free discovery calls. So head on over there, book a call with me, and we can take a look at your brand, think about next steps for you, and go from there. We're also on Instagram, on Herbal Content Cottage, with a period between each word. Or you can follow me on my personal Instagram is Hannah underscore Afton. Wonderful. Thank you so much once again. It truly has been um, insightful and inspiring to really get out there and take some consistent brand photos. So thank you so much for joining us today. And um, yeah, we'll see you around at the Herbal Content Cottage. That sounds great. Thanks for having me.